Hello, this is the first podcast from Henry Gettler's CMCI 1010 blog. Prescription pills have recently earned the reputation as America's fastest growing drug problem, and today we will be discussing the effect this has on students here at CU. Working their way into both the classroom setting and the party scene, prescription pills are a topic shaded by misconceptions. On one hand, we have prescription opiate-based painkillers. These are the pills you were given when you got your wisdom teeth out or you had surgery on your arm, and includes pills such as Vicodin or Oxycodone, and offers the far more dangerous side to pill abuse. On the other hand, we have the more popular prescription stimulants such as Adderall or Ritalin. Stimulants are fairly common and used in varying degrees to correct such disorders as ADHD and attention deficit disorder. Experts such as Matthew Varga will tell you that as many as one in five college students abuse prescription pills in some manner, but today we will be digging deeper into the issue to decide if such statistics are true here at CU. First, we will discuss prescription painkillers, and to get a better idea of the appeal painkillers can have for college students, I talked with Maxwell Rankin, a freshman here at CU. Yeah, I know a lot of friends that have extra painkillers from different types of surgeries and they always have too much to take so they end up selling them and they'll sell them to my friends or just other people they know and I know those people just take them and go out to the hill and drink with them. And And it is this recreational use that can cause problems. Serious problems. The side effects of prescription painkillers can be devastating. As Matthew Brown will tell you, other than being highly addictive substances, prescription pills are responsible for more overdoses than cocaine, heroin, inhalants, and hallucinogens combined, not to mention the deadly effects they can have when mixed with alcohol, as they often are. Although less dangerous than their counterpart, prescription stimulants are still wrecking havoc on the college experience here at CU. Outside of the classroom, prescription stimulants present a multitude of problems, and here to highlight some of those issues, we have Warrenburg Health Center's Strategies and Communications major, Lee Scriggins. The reason it does it is two things. One is, it is absolutely true. If you want to stay up all night long and grind out that paper like a monkey, you could probably do that, you know. Um, but if you, for effective learning and critical thinking and really integration of skills, you have to be sleeping before and after learning. Because sleep is one of the primary mechanisms that it scaffolds and encodes learning. So if you're not having that happen, it's sort of like water, it's like Teflon. Your brain is really not taking in the information. So if you're an adult trying to learn something that you're actually going to use in the future, you've got to be learning and you've got to be taking in the information in a way that it's going to be useful. Um, and stimulant misuse really kind of messes that whole thing up. Of course, however, it is ultimately education that we are concerned with here at CU. It is education that brought us all here, and it is education that is our first priority. We are students first, and everything else comes after that. That being said, college classes move at a much faster pace than many students were accustomed to in high school. And many students, especially freshmen, are left blindsided by the heavy course load in difficult classes. Unable to accept failure as an option, students look for any help they can get to give themselves a head start and offer a boost to their GPA. All too often, this help comes in the form of artificial help. Students misuse prescription stimulants, believing it'll help them to buckle down and crank out those long papers and difficult math problems. However, what they do not see is the impairing effects prescription stimulants have on your ability to learn. Little organizing task. That's sort of what a brain does when they're not using stimulants effectively. So getting distracted like that is a problem, and there's a lot of relational problems that happen, like around irritability. Um, misjudging the social environment, getting a little paranoid. And then at the far limit, you can actually get, I've met people who have gotten really like delusional from excessive stimulant use because that's what happens when you don't sleep and you're using it at really high rates. That's not super prevalent, but it definitely happens. Prescription pills are going to be one of the many substances students will be exposed to here at CU. With national statistics on the rise, it is up to us, the students, to make a change for the better. The facts are in. Unless used correctly, prescription pills of any sort can be devastating substances and something that you do not want to bother with. Just because it comes from a doctor's office does not mean it is safe. That is all we have for you today. This has been a Henry Geller CMCI 1010 podcast.
I would like to thank you for tuning in, and I would like to thank both Lee Scriggins and Maxwell Rankin for their time and knowledge.